know, the young people that are going to be living there. So. Mm -hmm. And station number one is very important. Sta I mean, We've always had a fire station number one. Yeah. Always have. It's like, it's a cornerstone. That's right. Um, That's right. So let's uh, kind of come back around and talk about the history okay. that you're, you were referring to. How old Perfect. is the St. Paul Fire Department? Started, um, well, the first fire, first recorded fire was in 1836. Um, we didn't have a fire department then. <laughs> Um, for many years, we operated as a just a band of volunteer mm -hmm. companies, actually independent uh, commercial companies that would respond to fires. And the more property they saved, the more they got paid. And mm -hmm. that was kind of traditional around the nation. Um, it, we decided to get away from that in 1855, and so they incorporated a single government entity called the St. Paul Fire Department in 1855. It was still kind of part-time. There were some paid uh, personnel, but a lot of volunteers still. And we, we operated that way until 1877, and then we became a full-time paid fire department. Wow. So, and we've been in operation continuously since then. We started with three pieces of apparatus. We had a ladder truck, a fire engine, and a hose cart, all pulled by hand. We didn't even have horses back then. And right now we have 26, uh, fire companies, uh, 50 some odd pieces of motorized apparatus and no horses anymore. Oh, no so. horses. Oh, darn. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd like to get a horse. That would have uh, been fun. The police have the horses, so okay. we'll let them have those. So um, you're finding out more and more about your history, actually, as you're going along. A great along. history, yes. Um, one of the things, and in, in fact, one of the names that's been nominated for our new headquarters is the Gaudette Building. Mm -hmm. And Alfred and Will, William Gaudette were two black firefighters um, perhaps the first black firefighters in, in a career fire department in, in, in the nation wow. um, came to us in 1885. Um, Alfred was the older uh, brother and um, he served for 41 years, retired as a captain, probably was the first captain and lieutenant in the United States in, as a black firefighter. Wow. His younger brother William um, came on the department in, in the early 1900s and um, served for 12 years and was killed in a line of duty accident in 1921. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, in okay. fact, um, our friend Al Bonet, a firefighter up at Station 23, has done a lot of history in there. And he's uncovered some interesting ghost stories related to the family. And, and so he's going to be talking about that um, at an oh. upcoming seminar, and that'll be very interesting to hear him talk about that. And perhaps that'll be available on a website or... I hope so. It's think? part of the um, city's uh, Black History Month celebration this month, and uh, I'm hoping that that'll be put on the web for uh, future viewers. Yeah, so. that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned uh, that we had some of our f the first black firefighters potentially in the mm -hmm. nation here right. in the late 1800s. Right. And so that kicked off a, a long, actually, history of African Americans in the fire department. Right. And um, unfortunately, there have been some challenges along the way. Um, okay. And so there have been several calls for more, a more culturally competent mm -hmm. fire department over, yep. th over a long period of time, many years, including the NAACP and whatnot. Right. Um, and so you, on your watch, are taking it a step further to say we are going to become a very culturally, culturally competent right. organization. Can you talk a little bit about how you're going to go about that and what maybe some of what prompted the sure. decision? Sure. Um, we suffered in, uh, we suffered um, through many years of, and, and really it goes back to the 1800s and, and the early 1900s when the black firefighters pointed out the fact that they felt harassed in some of the stations. They felt that there was discrimination on promotion tests. They felt that discipline was not consistent. And, and lo and behold, almost 100 years later, that's still some of the issues that some of our employees face. And so in um, 2008, um, we instituted a uh, diversity task force, race relations, diversity task force in the department. Uh, um, an, uh, perhaps not the first time we've tried to address that with a committee, but brought the firefighter, Firefighters United, Black Firefighters United, mm -hmm. um, an organization of black firefighters in our department, brought them in and, and sat them down and said, what, what do you guys see as the problems? Um, where do you think we should go? What are the action items? And of course, we had a, a, a very public um, uh, instance of what was perceived as discrimination mm -hmm. with our nuisance incident out at the public service garage. Yeah. And that to me was a wake-up call. I mean, I, I was not culturally com competent at that time and didn't know all the issues. And then 
uh, having that happen to us and having the black firefighters very graphically tell personal stories about their family history mm -hmm. and discrimination and lynchings and murders, um, it, it, it was real apparent to me that it isn't just a, a, a black and white issue, it's a personal issue with a lot of our firefighters. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we had to deal with that and we wanted to deal with that. So we formed this committee, we identified some actions that needed to happen. We've looked at some of the old cases of alleged discrimination and um, I think we're trying to bring some healing to not only to the past but what do we do to really fix the problem in the future. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be another hundred years and still have <laughs> this go on. So That's good. Yeah. If you're just joining us we're talking with Chief Tim Butler from the St. Paul Fire Department. Um, I'm Lisa Tabor and uh, let's kind of follow this line a little bit okay. and talk about what you are specifically, what you specifically have enacted um, to help your, your organization become more culturally competent. So trainings, things like that? We've, um, we've talked about training. We haven't identified exactly what the format for that will be, um, but that will be a department-wide training. And in the past, that training has been held with large groups, mm -hmm. and it seems to be rather ineffective at mm -hmm. the large group level. We want to bring it down to the fire company level. A fire company is four people working on an apparatus. And so we'll bring it down to the kitchen table. We'll have it in the fire stations where the workplace is and where the main issues are being wrestled with and we'll try to bring the training down to that level. We've also looked at a restorative justice circle where we can look at an, an older incident, see if there's some healing and some lessons that we can learn from there. If we can um, find some ways to um, provide restitution for some of the issues, great. If we can only apply lessons learned from that to the future, mm -hmm. that also is helpful. So I think sometimes we just talk the issues out and, and the impact that it had on individuals. Mm -hmm. I think that broader shared perspective is really important because I know I was taken by surprise on some of the things and I'm like, I never thought of it that mm -hmm. way. And I think if we had all of our people exposed to some of those personal stories and the personal impacts of discrimination, I think that would go a long ways towards bringing some healing. So, right. yeah. And um, so some other tactics that, that organizations typically might engage in, you are also doing, such yeah. as recruiting more people of color and Targeted young people. Recruiting. Mm -hmm. yep. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, in the in the uh, in the the latest, uh, we just had a firefighters entrance exam that was announced, and and we did a, a pretty extensive recruiting effort, um, designed primarily to look at St. Paul residents. If we if we could get into St. Paul high schools, we know that there's already automatic diversity there. Yes. I mean, it is reflective of the community that we serve. If we can draw from the 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 residents of St. Paul, so we implemented a um, five point bonus. If you lived in the city, you got a five, five residency points. And they did that citywide. It wasn't just for the fire department. They did it for all um, new employees. And we went into the high schools. We had a lot of information forums. We held a lot of community groups. And Al and, the, and Firefighters United, they were actively involved in helping us do that. We, tr we tried to um, target the advertisement for the test to blacks, to women, to minorities. Um, to people who don't, uh, that, that are bilingual in languages other than English because those are the people that we're serving. Mm -hmm. and, and so it was, um, that was a, uh, an effort that we put forward. Mm -hmm. I can't say it was totally successful. It was a little bit more successful compared to our 2005 test. Mm -hmm. um, and how do you measure success? Well, as far as the applicant pool, okay. I mean, we looked at the, the racial and, and um, gender breakdown mm -hmm. of the applicants compared to what the applicant pool was in 2005.